So, you know, if you study, yeah, so if you study people who are at the pinnacle of anything, you recognize that to get there, motivation was maybe 1% of the formula. Maybe. 1%. And I'll prove it to you. If you want to become a world-class bodybuilder, say an IFBB pro, what that takes is you have to train twice a day, six days a week. You have to have eight meals a day. Your calorie intake is regimented. Your meals are pre-planned and pre-cooked. You don't eat according to taste. You eat according to function. So my trainer, for instance, will eat and I'm going, what are you eating? And he's having the most, he'll have chicken that was boiled without salt. And he'll have like half a kilo of it. I mean, what are you doing? He says, I'm taking in protein. He doesn't say I'm eating. He says, I'm taking in protein. For him, it's functional. It's not taste-based. Then, you would probably have to train for a minimum. And this is if you are a genetic phenom. You'd have to train for a minimum of 10 years before you could get on a stage and compete at an average level with an average global bodybuilder. Average. Okay. So why am I, why am I telling you this? All, all of us here, at the beginning of a new year, write these things called New Year's resolutions. And then it, you, you know, you, New Year's resolutions, number one, make more money. Yeah? Uh, number two, uh, change my boyfriend. Number three, get into shape. Yeah? Number three, get into shape is somewhere in the top three. So what do you do? You go to the gym, you get a gym membership. Yeah? You buy, you go to the local uh, Nike store and you buy like all of your gym gear. You are motivated. You are inspired. You are going to the damn gym. You go to YouTube, you subscribe to all of the fitness channels. You go to Instagram, you follow all of the fitness models. You are motivated. You are going to the damn gym. You're going to get in shape. That's what you're going to do. The people you're following on YouTube have been working out for a minimum of five years to look like that. So you have the incorrect understanding that after a month of working out, you're going to look like them. So what happens in the first month? You're excited. You go to gym every single month. You know, and you take the pains and your body is sore, but you know, I'm excited. I'm going to gym. Then life happens. Company doesn't make money. You don't make your targets. You fall a bit ill. Something happens. And all of a sudden, you stop going to gym for a day. A day becomes two. Two becomes a week. Now, all of a sudden, you've had a gym membership for three months, and you haven't been in that time. What did, what did you miss? You thought motivation was the formula. Winners don't need motivation. Winners need discipline. Discipline's about getting it done because it needs to get done, not because I feel like it, not because I'm motivated for it. You think Nelson Mandela was motivated to spend 27 years in prison? <laughs> you think Martin Luther King was motivated to march across the states and proclaim freedom? You think, you know, if you look at people that change the world, they're not doing it because they're motivated. They're doing it because they made a commitment to do it and they disciplined to see it through. Discipline is far more important than motivation, which is why you've got to be careful of the decisions you make because once you make the decision, you have to see that decision through. Like my mentor says, first we make the decisions, then the decisions make us. So you've got to be very careful of the decisions you make, be very careful of the commitments you make. Motivation, I'm telling you now, is completely overrated. It's important, don't get me wrong. You know, we meet according to motivation, we feel good, rah, rah, but that'll fade. You need a stronger will and a deeper commitment to see things through.